The Great Rebellion of 1817-1818, also known as the 1818 UVA Wellassa Uprising, or simply the UVA Rebellion, was the third of Kandyan War with the British, in what is now Sri Lanka. It took place in what is now UVA, which was then a province of the Kingdom of Kandy against the British colonial government under Governor Robert Brown Rigg, which had been controlling the formerly independent Tudorata. Background The Sinhalese were greatly affected by the administrative policies of the British and were not used to being ruled by a king who lived far away in another continent. This created unrest among the local people and the aristocratic chiefs in the Kandyan Kingdom. Leadership. Kepatai Pola of Dasaur was sent initially by the British government to stop the uprising but ended up joining the rebellion as its leader and is celebrated for his actions even today in Sri Lanka. He assisted many regional leaders in providing men and material from various regions. The other leaders who supported this independent movement were Will Bawa, Tupili Matalalva Adhikaram, Kohu Kumbo Arat Rala, Dimbulana D. Save Kivulagadara Mahotala, Majigula D. Save Buta Rat Rala, Galago de Famili members, Gilaj Dara Mahotala, Miga Hapiti Arat Rala, Damba Wina D. Save and Godagadara Adhikaram, Karunda Kumbo Mahotala. Kepiti Pola went up to Alupotha and joined the rebels having returned to all arms and ammunition of the British. Rev. Waryapola Sumingala of Asgaria fled to Hang Urankata with the relics casket which resulted in a more vigorous phase of the rebellion. By September 1817 two rebel leaders Majigula Basnayaka Nilam and Elapala Adhikaram surrendered to the British and Pilamata law led the rebellion. The British captured Elapala who was the Disawa of Iluwar and a brother of Maha Adhikaram Elapala and beheaded them in Bogimbara on the 22nd. 7 October 1818. Rebellion. The rebellion was launched by Kepatai Pola de Saw. Except for Molagada and Iknalagada, many chiefs joined the rebels. The rebels captured Matail and Kandy before Kepatai Pola fell ill and was captured and beheaded by the British. His skull was abnormal, as it was wider than usual, and was sent to Britain for testing. It was returned to Sri Lanka after independence, and now rests in the Kandyan Museum. The rebellion failed due to a number of reasons. It was not well planned by the leaders. The areas controlled by some chiefs who helped the British provided easy transport routes for British supplies. Dore Sami who was said to have a claim to the Sinhalese throne was found not to have any relation. Cause of Rebellion The 1817 rebellion described as the UVA rebellion by historians was the culmination of the people's anger and dissatisfaction over the British rule which promised to uphold and foster the Buddhist religion and observe the traditions and norms that had prevailed in the Kandyan kingdom prior to the signing of the Kandyan Convention on March 2, 1815. Mr. William Tolfrey, the chief translator of the British resident of Kandy, appraised the commissioner in charge of Kandyan affairs, Mr. Sutherland, of the volatile situation that prevailed in the country at the beginning of December 1816 and January 1817, and warned him of an impending revolt against the British administration. Reports reached the authorities that Duracimi, the son of Kalunayaka, a relative of the deposed king, was claiming rights to the throne. Duracimi was mustering the support of the people in UVA for a rebellion, and some Sinhalese leaders had joined him. In addition to being the son of Kalunayaka, Duracimi was a native of South Kural, a Buddhist priest, and appeared in public as Will Bawa. These facts were later confirmed by the evidence of Udagama and nuns at the trial. The appointment of a Malay Mahandiram Haji by Major Wilson, the resident in Bidula, was another action of the British administration which prompted the displeasure of the Sinhalese. The areas of UVA Wellessa and New Warakulavia were neglected jungle areas which had a predominant population of Muslims. The inhabitants of these areas disrupted time and again the smooth supply of salt and dry fish to the people in the Kandyan Kingdom. Rebellion spreads out in October 1817 the rebellion broke out. 
Major Wilson who was in Badulla sent out a battalion under Haji Mahandiram, and commanded by Haji's brother, to quell the rebellion. The people of UVA were so provoked with this incident that they caught Haji and produced him before Duresami who after trial sentenced him to be beheaded. The British were not deterred by this action of the Sinhalese. On October 12, 1817, Major Wilson marched to UVA with a Malay troop under his command with L.T. Newman. On this march Major Wilson was killed near the present town of Bibil when an arrow aimed by the Sinhalese rebels pierced his chest. The British and Malay soldiers had to surmount difficult terrain which slowed their forward march. In the meantime L.T. Carl Hardy gathered intelligence that the rebels were on the march to Dollar Spage in the Gampola area. On October 18, 1817, he proceeded towards that area with troops commanded by Major O'Brien. On arrival they found that the area was calm and quiet free of any incident. The people of Hartara Koral and Tunkaral too refused to join the rebels. The British government attributed this attitude of the natives to the influence that Malagada exerted in the area and the personal grudge he had, with Kepatai Pola de Saw. But in Galabodia Corral, the homeland of Kepatai Pola's father, the British has faced problems with the rebels. It was observed that Kepatai Pola had not been seen in the area for nearly eight months after the rebellion broke out. To show gratitude to those who did not participate in the rebellion, the British government by Gazette Notification No. 19 of 1818 reduced the grain tax from one-tenth to one-fourteenth. By Section 22 of the same order all lands belonging to those in the corral were exempted from land tax. Clause 53 authorized a centralized civil and judicial system of administration with a headquarters in Kandy. A team of three British civil servants began operating at this administrative headquarters. Spread and fall of the rebels The rebellion spread to the other areas of the Kanjian kingdom. In April, 1818, Rev. Warya Sumingala of Asgara Maha Viharaya removed a sacred tooth relic to Hang Urankata, an area of difficult terrain. Subsequent to the removal of tooth relic from Kandy rebellion broke out in Matail, Damara, Dinuara, Wallapane, Hewaheta and other areas. This forced the British to bring in troops from Batikala and Kandy. Most of these soldiers were killed by the Sinhalese. By now a Gazette notification No. 6 of 1817 was issued, awarding a reward of 2,000 rix dollars to the head of each rebel leader, including Wilbawa, Kililgadara Mahotala, and Butawa, Rate Rala. Kililgadara Mahotala was arrested and beheaded at Bogimbara on December 18, 1818. Kililgadara Mahotala was the disarver of Walapana and a royal poet in the court of Sri Wikrama Rajasinghe. Ayalepala, the disarver of Iluwar Elapala and a brother of Maha Adhikaram, was also arrested and beheaded at Bogambara on October 27, 1818. The following leaders had surrendered. Matamagoda Disawar of Tunkaral, Kobakajuwa Disawar of Udapalatha, Damba Winna Disawar, Dimbalana Disawar, Godajdara Dasawar, Kataragana Maha Bethma and Basnayaka Nilame, Butor Rate Rala. Towards the end of September with the onset of monsoon rains Majigala Basnayaka Nilame and Elapala Adhikaram too surrendered. Final phase The situation prevailing in UVA and Wellata was so precarious that the English set fire to villages, houses, livestock, and whatever they could burn. Pilomator law had given leadership to rebels by putting forward another pretender to the throne as King Wirabahu, a member of the Nayaka caste. At this time the Disawar of Wellasa, Milawa, an ailing elderly leader, 
was removed by the British and Kepatai Pola was appointed as Disawar of Wellassa. The British sent Kepatai Pola who remained in Kandy until October 17, 1818 to UVA to bring the situation under control. At about the same time a British officer Carl Bartok took into custody Wirabahu the pretender. When Kepatai Pola arrived in Wellassa the Sinhalese were engaged in a fierce battle with the British soldiers. Kepatai Pola sent back all his arms and ammunitions to the British agent and joined the Sinhalese rebels to lead the battle. With this change of events, other Sinhalese leaders including Pila Maitalor Disawar of Sath Karal, Majigula, Uda Gabada Nilaim, Elapala, Alepala, Godajda Radhakaram, Badalkambo Arala also joined the rebels. The British had to bring troops from India to quell the rebellion. Finally the British were able to arrest most of the leaders. Properties of 18 rebel leaders were confiscated. Pilamata Law, who was ailing at the time of arrest, was exiled to the islands of Mauritius. Kepatai Pola and Majigula were beheaded in Bogimbara after trial on November 18, 1818. Aftermath Casualties The British confiscated the properties of the people involved in the uprising. They killed all cattle and other animals, burnt homes, property and even the salt in the possession during the repression. Paddy fields in the area of Wellassa were all destroyed. The irrigation systems of the duchies of UVA and Wellassa, hitherto the rice bowl of Sri Lanka were systematically destroyed. The British also massacred the male population of UVA above the age of 18 years. Legacy In the Journal of UVA, Herbert White, a British government agent in Badulla after the rebellion minuted, It is a pity that there is no evidence left behind to show the exact situation in UVA in terms of population or agriculture development after the rebellion. The new rulers are unable to come up to any conclusion on the exact situation of UVA before the rebellion as there is no trace of evidence left behind to come to such conclusions. If thousands died in the battle they were all fearless and clever fighters. If one considers the remaining population of four-fifths after the battle to be children, women and the aged, the havoc causes unlimited. In short, the people have lost their lives and all other valuable belongings. It is doubtful whether UVA has at least now recovered from the catastrophe. Gazette notification during the rebellion A Gazette notification was issued by Robert Brownrigg to condemn all those who rebelled against British rule in Sri Lanka. All those who participated in the uprising were condemned as traitors and their properties confiscated by the government under the notification. Several governments after the independence of Sri Lanka in the past wanted to revoke this ignominious Gazette notification, however could not take action in this regard. In 2011, the Gazette notification issued by Governor Brownrigg was brought to Sri Lanka on the instruction of President Mahinda Rajapaksa. It was submitted to the parliament and was revoked with the signature of the president. This allowed all those who participated in the uprising to be recognized as national heroes, and their label as traitors erased. A national declaration was awarded on their behalf to their descendants on Republic Day of Sri Lanka, the 22nd of May.